Hi. So you're interested in poetry? I've been writing and performing poetry since I was about six years old and before I started writing and performing I used to go really really crazy I used to scream kick shout and I think that for me poetry has been a way to connect with myself connect with others and also connect with culture and I want to talk to you today a little bit about what the point is of poetry, what the purpose of poetry is, how it fits into the 21st century, how it fits into our daily lives, and one of the most accessible ways that we can bring about the change that we wish to see in our world, as well as in order to discover who we are as individuals and as members of a community. Poetry is a fuse to conduct emotions, to prevent short circuits and electric shocks that conveys meanings, messages, emotions to the audience in a safe way. It allows us to put those times when we've been deeply affected by something into some kind of containable space so that we can then share those moments with others so that we can look back and we can reflect on what those things meant to us but it's not just about telling someone it's about showing what it is that you feel it's about making other people feel what you feel and it's about you feeling what other people are feeling it's a way of cultivating empathy, compassion, and understanding. It's about that goosebump moment. It's about the tingle on the back of the legs. Poetry isn't a recipe. It's not an Ikea building manual. It's something that gets to the core and the heart and the tingles of what it is to be fully alive. It's also a really important way to deal with trauma. There's been studies that have proved that trauma results not just in, in mental um, difficulties but also in it manifests itself physically. We all know how stress can affect people. I work in a school, I see it all the time. And um, what has been found is that when people write about trauma, it actually diminishes physical symptoms that have come about as a result of that trauma. The really important thing is to it, that people don't feel that they have a space in order to talk about the difficult things. We turn away from them. And poetry forces us to look at something, but it also creates a way that we can look at it, that we can find beauty in the brokenness that we can find a way to, to sugar the pill and um, that we can allow people to, to see the unseeable. I think a lot of the problems that we have in our world are because people don't know who they are. And who we are changes all the time. There is no one self, there are multiple selves and there are multiple things of who we are in certain circumstances with different people. And poetry allows us to explore who we are and report back to the world. It also lets us sit in someone else's life to see things from other people's perspectives. Take, for example, a poet like Patricia Smith writing the poem Skinhead. She's a black female American poet writing from the perspective of a white skinhead racist. So poetry gave her an opportunity to step into those shoes, to look fully, to look unflinchingly, 
at what that means. Poetry says the unsayable, speaks about the unspeakable and gives voice to the voiceless. It also allows us to connect with art. So often in order to be an artist takes a great deal of time and money. And that's not something that's open to a lot of people and as art has become more and more professionalized and something that's up there on the stage, people feel like they're not worthy to be an artist. Like, but everybody needs to be creative in order to be at peace with themselves and peace with each, at peace with each other and at peace with the world around them. And in order to feel like they are an active agent, that they can act on the world. Or else people are just frustrated and angry. So that's really the beauty I feel of poetry is that you don't need expensive oil paints. You don't need a, a canvas. You don't need a D5. You can pick up a paper. You can pick up a pen. You can write it on your phone. Whatever. And um, so it, it's the accessibility really, which I think is, is key to the power of poetry. I'm dyslexic and I always struggled with the written word. I always felt very um, inferior and self-conscious about my writing ability. I used to have to go to special needs classes when I was in primary school. It's only through speaking and through performing that I have felt that I can connect with writing. And performing has been what excites me about literature, about words. So also it's about um, the beauty of spoken word poetry is its accessibility, not just to literate people, but also people who are much more um, interested in orality. And um, I grew up hearing my mother recite poetry and seeing poetry as something to be heard, something to be experienced, not just something that exists on the page. Yes, poetry exists on the page, but it doesn't live there. And um, the real beauty as well of, of poetry and of, of live poetry is um, coming together as a community. And art provides that space where we can come together. Poetry brings people together in a way that they can be inspired, that they can see another world is possible. It's a way of communing, of creating community. So often in the activist world, we can get bogged down by so many meetings and all the things that there is to do. And poetry really provides that space to enjoy, to revel in the beauty of this life that we have. And that's what poetry provides, is it provides that space, that room, in order to create the world, to write the world that you want to see. The role of the poet for social change is to entertain. The revolution needs to laugh. Um, it's very depressing when you look at all the issues that we have in the world and those can really get on top of us. And it's important that we laugh. It's important that we remain human. And um, I think that poetry can really do that. And, and the role of the artist is to bring people together in a creative, artistic, inspiring space, inspiring atmosphere, in order that we can imagine a different world. Because it's very hard to do that with endless meetings and endless um, depression and feeling like you don't even know where to start. Poetry is powerful. It's resistant. It's transformative. And it's current. Poetry is one of the most ancient art forms. In Ireland, the bards were 
supported financially by the big houses, by the aristocratic families of Ireland. Um, they actually went and studied for seven years and they um, really were the keepers of history. They took the ideas of the masses and they presented them to, to the king. And also they took the ideas of the king and they presented them to, to the people. So the bards were almost like um, a newspaper service. They were, they were the media. And they had immense power. They could, you know, literally cast a spell that could immortalize someone or demonize for centuries. And uh, I think there's a lot of talk now about this new genre of spoken word, and it's really not new at all. I mean, many of our our most revered texts, like um, the Iliad, were carried by people who memorized them, who spread them orally long before they were written down. And in our current culture, where we're in a digital age, I feel like poetry, which is performed, is even more relevant as now the, the audiovisual medium is what people are interested in. And um, I don't think that there should be any kind of opposition or between um, whether you write for the page or you write for the stage. A good poem is a good poem. Um, I think what makes poetry different from other types of writing is that it pays a pe special attention to sound, to the musicality of language, to... I've had people who don't speak English who'd be like, I don't know what you said, but it was, it was lovely, it was great, I really enjoyed it, I was really engaged because of your body language, because of the rhythm, because of the way that you said it, the effects of your voice. So I think it's really important that um, we don't confine ourselves to seeing that we are either just page poets or stage poets. You're a poet, basically. So my advice to you, if you're interested in writing and performing and sharing what you write and perform, is to just do it. Write unselfconsciously. Write like the way you should dance, like nobody's watching. Letting yourself get carried away with the beat. And don't think too much when you're writing the poem. Don't think, oh, what are people gonna think of me? What are they gonna say? Are they gonna judge me about this? Go to the deepest parts of yourself. Go to those moments that you're most ashamed of. Go to the most cringy things and write about them in a way that lays them bare. Write like you're never even going to show it to anybody. Those have always been my best poems. The poems that, I, that, the poems that people respond to the most are the poems that I thought when I was writing them that I would never have the guts to say to anybody that said the things that I couldn't say in normal conversation, that normal human life didn't provide the opportunity to be able to say those things. Write what scares you and others will connect with that. And then when you go out and you share that, the warmth that you get back from people helps you deal with those issues. If you're interested in, in performing and writing, you just need to practice. You just need to do it. Be inspired by others. Look at others. Watch what other people are doing. If you like something, work out why you like it. But don't copy other people. And if you are going to be inspired by somebody else, acknowledge your sources. I've listened to po poets and I'm like, that's straight off Kate Tempest. I know you've copied it. You've even stolen her title. All you need to say is, after Kate Tempest. That's fine. That's totally fine. But acknowledge it. Acknowledge that you've been inspired by somebody else, that we come from a continuum of artists, that nobody is in a vacuum. We're all inspired by each other. So be inspired by it 
but don't copy it. You need to find enough um, confidence in your own voice and what it is that you've got to say rather than to feel like you need to fit in with a certain style and that that is spoken word. Because also that just makes poetry and the genre of spoken word within poetry really boring and staid. I listened to a number of American poets and after a couple I was like, they all sound the same. They are all doing the poetry voice where it's all so dramatic. Please, just don't do it. And um, if you're interested in performing your work, the most important thing is to just get up, to just get on stage, be willing to flop, be willing to be awful. It's fine. The poetry audience is lovely. They will give you a clap anyway. And it's a bit like swimming. You can sit on the side of the pool practicing your strokes for as long as you want, but you can't learn to swim unless you jump in the water. So you've just got to jump in there and you've got to just get in there naked. You've got to get on the stage naked. Not necessarily like Ernesto, the naked poet naked, metaphorically speaking. You have to lay yourself bare. You have to be genuine and you have to be open in order that you can connect with yourself, you can connect with others, you can find your community, and you can connect with culture. Okay, so your homework assignment is to share something which you've written with somebody else, especially if you've never done this before. Ask them what they think. Get them to give you a critique of it. Uh, if you have shared your poetry with somebody else, but you haven't performed it, your homework is to take that piece to an open mic gig, find somewhere, go to writeoutloud.net, go to Poetry London, search on Facebook, ask a friend, find a poetry night in your area and perform that poem on stage. This is a piano lesson free zone. There's no encyclopedias at home, the laptop has to feed 13. My granddad went to school on an odd, wet day. The head teacher apologised to my father when he got in to university. School didn't think a bankrupted shopkeeper's son had much in him, just another brogan. They said, be a teacher, they won't employ you as an engineer. I'm glad dad didn't listen. I've swapped stage and mic for whiteboard and PowerPoint. Encore for poetry's boring miss. And how do we tell these kids to get 27K in debt for the liberation my dad got with a grant? What can get them beyond child protection, illiteracy, the PlayStation? What can I possibly teach them if they're lost before they're born? Write a poem about it. Simply isn't good enough. The rich write history. The rest tell stories. So write it down and tell it well.